We're going to be discussing evidence for wave behavior and particle behavior. So it all starts with a really simple question, which is, what is light? I mean, we all use it all the time. You're using it right now, hopefully, to see me. I've got light bouncing off my face and my more and more wrinkles and less hair. But I mean, we all experience light every day. So a very simple question and a very deep question is, what is it? And our own need for using models means that we often like to assign things that we already understand. So if we don't understand what light is, well, we do understand particles, or so we think. So we say, all right, well, light might be a particle. And other people said, well, light might be a wave. So which is it? So we're going to investigate this a little bit further. So first of all, let's keep going right here. Let's go along and look at, all right, light is a particle. Why would that be? So that means it's like this some discrete little you know ball of something and bouncing off stuff, doing stuff. So let's see, what can particles actually do? Well, particles can reflect. You know, if something bounces off a wall, so you know, it goes boiling, it bounces off. All right, particles can reflect. They can transfer momentum because, you know, they can push stuff out of the way and stuff. So, all right, fine. They can also refract, which means depending on the material, they can speed up or slow down and they'll change their angle. Um, so, for example, you know, if you're in a bathtub or something and you look down at your arm in the water, you know, it looks like your arm is actually bent. It's not. It's just refraction that did that. Uh, so, I mean, that can be the case. So we think, yay, light must be a particle. In fact, you can do the experiment. It's called photoelectric effect, which is uh, when, for example, light uh, can bounce off. Uh, so light actually comes in, for example. So let's say a photon of light can come in like this right here. I'm drawing a photon of light here. This is light. And in certain conditions, uh, it can actually eject an electron. So actually an electron can go flying out of some metal surface, for example, like maybe like zinc or something like that. This is called photoelectric effect. Well, it turns out light can have sufficient localization of energy. In other words, you know, light can be like a ball or a particle enough to where it can actually kick off an electron. Uh, from the metal. And it turns out waves can't really do this. So because of this, you can say, all right, so we've got this thing called photoelectric effect, right? Which is that light must be a particle. In other words, the conclusion could be, all right, well, if we decided it's a particle, great, it's a particle. And in fact, it can't be a wave. So that's sort of the conclusion here. All right, fine. But then along came something really strange, though. Uh, you can take light and it can do something called diffraction. Diffraction can't be explained by a particle. So let's go back and uh, look at this, basically start at the starting board again. I'm like, all right. So for example, a Dutch guy named uh, Huygens, uh, he was given most of the credit for this. Lots of other people worked on it too, but let's look at it from waves. Can waves do the same thing? Waves can bounce off of stuff. So it's all right, they can also refract. Turns out they can also diffract, they can spread out. What I mean by that is, you know, if you've got, for example, a uh, light like this right here, and light is coming in, let's say in this way right here, like that, then it can actually make these spots, you know, where it's sort of, you know, for example, bright here, less bright here, but these spots where it's, you know, bright and then not bright, bright and not bright. This is called diffraction. Particles can't do this, only waves can. She's like, oh, great. So that means then, diffraction is actually evidence for light being a wave. In other words, light should be a wave. Now, to diffract, something has to interfere with itself. You know, you have this constructive and destructive interference, either they add up or they subtract. That's why you get these bright spots or these dark spots. But particles can't interfere with themselves, so we think. So, uh, by the way, it's wrong. But, you know, this was the thinking. <laughs> so particles couldn't interfere with themselves, so it was thought, so that meant, hey, conclusion, okay, great, that means light must be a wave and can't be a particle. But do you realize we have a problem now? We just said before that because of photoelectric effect, light has to be a particle, can't be a wave, correct? And because of diffraction, light has to be a wave, not a particle, also correct. What? Do you understand? This is really strange, isn't it? That means light must sometimes act like a wave, sometimes act like a particle. So what is it? When you first saw this image right here, I purposely didn't tell you much about it. Did you see the word particle, P-A-R-T-I-C-L-E, or did you see wave? Oh, it's a clever one, right? It's like a particle and a wave. And the really cheap answer, and this is so cheap, but it's actually our, our current understanding of it, is that we call this thing a photon. That is one particle of light. And it turns out if you sort of zoom in, it's a wave. If you zoom out, it's a particle. 
And although this sounds really cheap, which it is, I mean, Einstein said it best. He was like, look, you don't have to force, why does light have to be a particle or a wave? Can't light just be light? So in other words, this is us, this is sort of a TOK thing, a theory of knowledge idea that, that why do we have to force it to be one or the other? Can't it just be its own thing? Our models of particles and our models of waves sometimes are useful in explaining behavior, but it doesn't mean light has to follow this. Light does its own thing. So that's why we've come up with this construct, this idea of a photon, one particle of light, and yet it still has a wavelength. So that's kind of weird, yes, but this is actually our current, actually this is where we currently are. We all agree like, yeah, yeah, it's a photon, it's weird, and there we go. And it actually gets even weirder because although light can behave both as a particle and a wave, turns out matter can behave like a particle and a wave as well. So this is where, you know, like an electron, for example, okay, sure, it acts like a particle, we expected that, but it turns out electrons can also diffract. In other words, electrons can interfere with themselves. We don't quite understand what's going on there. It's weird, isn't it? But matter can actually behave like a wave as well. So this is called the wave-particle duality, and it's weird. <laughs>